spot in the universe. Don't get too comfortable. This is a place where you will find those with an experience that's out of this world, and possibly deep within your life. I welcome you to the Oracles with James Tyson. Lean forward and listen. We will pull you into a supernatural journey with guests from around the world, each one Experiencing some of the most extraordinary phenomena this wee planet has to offer. Now, here are the Oracles with James Tyson. Thank you, Liam, and thank you, listener, for tuning in to today's episode of The Oracles with James Tyson. It's me, James, and today I'm bringing in a friend of mine, Jim Kolisnik. Now, Jim is a paranormal investigator. He's been doing this a long time. He's set up shop here on the lower left Canadian coast, just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia. His team is called Vancouver Supernatural. But if you Google that, you'll get a lot of stuff because for those of you who may or may not know, the TV series Supernatural is filmed here in Vancouver. So, yeah, there's a bit of a crossover there. Though... Jim isn't part of the television show. He knows a lot of people in the film industry and gets gets into a lot of interesting locations. Like um, we talk about a studio up in North Vancouver here. And I uh, got in there and was dealing with something. He, he gets invited. He and the team get invited to a number of different locations. We talk about a place called St. Mary's, which is a residential school. The front end of it is a Stolo Nation, um, a for, um, Canadian First Nations. But their main offices are out in the front part of the building. But it is an old residential school. Not the 1800s residential school, because that had been raised to the ground through fire years ago. But this one was built way after that and out of community mission back I think in the 1980s it shut down so we talk a little bit about that and the activity in there we talk about some residential things we talk about why he does it Uh, he's with a group of investigators and they basically just love to help people who are experiencing paranormal activities in their homes or their businesses they are a non-profit and they'll travel throughout British Columbia and they'll dip down into Washington State in a pinch too the group is located in Vancouver like Vancouver is kind of it's a weird way of explaining it it's like la it's la is made of many many little cities vancouver is the same thing it's we've got we call it the lower mainland or some people now call it metro vancouver which is a pain in the butt and i think is a term brought in from ontario to make us feel bigger or some stupid thing but it's uh yeah the lower mainland of british columbia is literally it's the lower part of the mainland here on the province of bc and it's made up of 13 or so smaller communities cities one of which is vancouver the team's from all over the place and they'll travel everywhere around here if you uh do have a suspicion there is something going bang in the night that is something more than the raccoon in the ceiling that's what jim's team does again this vancouver supernatural their website's uh, being tweaked right now but you can join them vancouver supernatural on the facebook they actually have a thing on instagram called the cauldron 555 and uh, they have an event venue that they invite people out on and uh, heck you can get married there you can go there it's 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 kind of a bewitching kind of location i was talking to him after too he's got a sweat lodge so i'm going to hit him up for the sweat lodge coming up this spring because it's it's hard to find uh somebody who knows what they're doing and actually putting in a good putting on a good sweat for those of you who don't know what that is, we don't even talk about it on the interview, but Google Sweat Lodge. It's, it's kind of a cool thing. And uh, I know as a member of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, we actually had a sweat lodge in our training academy in Regina, Saskatchewan. So we, it was part of the, part of our cross-cultural training there. So very, very cool thing if you can get off to have a sweat. He has those too. So if you're 
close to uh, where we are here on the lower left Canadian coast, uh, go over to Vancouver Supernatural on Facebook and send Jim Kalisnik a message saying, hey, uh, I'd be interested in coming out to, for a sweat. So please, that's that's kind of the cool thing. But we are going to talk about things like crossing people over. We're going to talk about some of the, the work that he does that helps charities like museums they're you know kind of hurt for money for upkeep and things like that obviously a lot of museums are i say obviously because you and i listener are kind of woo woo people and we understand the ghost side of things they're haunted a lot of museums if not all museums will have activity in it and uh he really helps out some of the smaller communities and uh, gets a bit of a, an, an income injection by putting on uh, public paranormal tours of these older buildings. So we'll talk a little bit about that. I'm going to go get him right now. It's Jim Kalisnik from Vancouver Supernatural. Hello, Jim. How are you today? Good, thanks. How are you? I am well here. And uh, we're both living out here on the lower left Canadian coast on a drizzly spring day. But uh, everything oh, always beautiful. Be good. <laughs> it, it's always beautiful, drizzle or not. So that's what I say. It rains. Uh, rains because it's we live in a rainforest and it keeps everything green and yeah. uh that's what we like here is the greenery yeah you've been a part of vancouver supernatural well you started vancouver supernatural what was it you did before that that got you interested in the paranormal i had uh when i was a young kid i was uh bopping around all over the place in a bit of a recession so we were finding all these dives to live in really basically so i lived in one house uh on harris road um between gladwin and the and the reserve there and um it was a very active house we had two little boys that would um show themselves all the time we'd hear them you know we'd get woken up and hear you know balls bouncing down the the stairwell that went up to the upstairs and uh the boys would run down grab the ball run back up drop it down again you know for 20 minutes this went on and that's the one that woke me up and go well, what the heck is this because this just isn't it scared us we didn't open that door we had to have somebody come in and open the door we wouldn't want to we didn't want to go upstairs but we um my brother and i heard this and uh uh, I learned about the paranormal there, and when I and then I moved up to Hundred Mile House and started Caribou Paranormal. Okay, and, and did a whole bunch of stuff. And the, the place you were talking about before Gladwin Road and things like that—that's just outside of a place called um, Chilliwack in British Columbia. Yeah, it's just out of Abbotsford. It's kind of on the flat okay. between Abbotsford and Matsqui. Oh, okay, yeah, a little bit further to the west than I was thinking. Glad yeah. the Abbotsford area. Now that's um, an old farm area, and for people who are listening to this from the other side of the planet, um, the lower mainland of British Columbia, uh, the river, the Fraser River, comes down into the Pacific Ocean, and there's a lot of flats in that area. That probably at one time was all river, but over the centuries has calmed down, and we have a river, and we had all these flats, and it was a really good farm area. And back in the 1800s, uh, people, the settlers came out here and they were farming. But before that, there was uh, the First Nations or what people would call it, uh, the Canadian Indians lived all in that area. And there are a lot of older properties out there. And obviously, you, yeah. you, you guys ended up in one of them that was a little bit active. That's crazy. And then 100 Mile House, it literally is 100 miles up the road to uh, kind of north central British Columbia. Um, and that's, were you kind of on the, the Gold Rush Gold Rush Trail up in 100 Mile um, House? I'm not sure. It probably could be. You know, that had the reserve there uh, right up against the tracks. And... Um, uh, Matsqui was probably about you know three or four blocks away. So uh, yeah, I'd imagine it would be a trail to Vancouver. I can't see any other spot that it that it would have been on. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the so you know you could have had just about anything there. The two boys that were there were all I ever visualized was two you know something right out of The Shining. You know. Oh, so they were young, like uh, between seven and twelve, kind of. <laughs> They were young. They were young. Two young boys. We heard them giggling and playing at one time, but then the sound kind of went. Uh, we no longer really got sound, but you always knew they were there. It was all massive cold. So I learned about cold spots. I learned about just the paranoia and the feelings you get when they're watching. I, you know, I I still use those 
those are well what all ghost hunters really use is their their natural instincts yeah your gut your gut feeling yeah your gut hey, feeling. a question for you did you or your brother ever have to go to the hospital children's hospital or anything when you're young uh no Okay. The reason I ask that is a lot of times, uh, because dead, in my experience and in talking to a lot of people who do this stuff and some psychics, they say that, uh, like, kids will be in a hospital and they'll die in the hospital. And the parents go home and everyone grieves. Well, the kid doesn't cross over because it's basically, you know, the great grandmother comes through and says, hey, come on, Billy, let's go. And they're like, dude, I don't know who you are. Stranger danger. I'm staying for mom and dad. And well, mom and dad went home. And the kid is wandering around the hospital confused. And when another little kid comes to the hospital and is sick and their parents are doting over them and throwing a lot of love at them, when that kid finally leaves the hospital to go home, the ghost of the kid will go with them. Yeah, that's very possible. And they, they will hang out and they, like they, they like the love and they like the family and maybe they like the kid and now the, that kid will have the invisible friend in the closet and you know hearing stuff so I, I just wanted to check that off the box that you know, maybe you guys brought them there yourselves as opposed to them being in the house but m- most likely in, in that area they were probably part of the land or probably probably the house itself when you guys met yeah this is like um recently just actually last week i've been trying to get um like the house was torn down shortly after i left and um i've been there several times afterwards trying to pick something up in the field that it was on the house sat where the house sat and you know they're there but you can't really you know put your finger on it and then i went into the old barn that used to be beside the house and talked to the residents that uh, lived there and um, I walked in and it was like, holy crap, that thing, they're still here. They were in here. They, I felt them watching me at the top of the stairs. It's actually kind of creeping me out now. And I asked them if I can get in there, and I'm still working on it. So I'm really hoping that I can get in there again now. And, you know, I'm, I'd like to, um, I don't know, I don't know, if, um, talk to a few people and see if it's possible to, or safe to move them. Because um, when you offer love, I think that, or help, you know. I don't want to. I'm not a big fan of sending off until I know exactly why they're there. Yeah. Well, what we'll do is I should uh, hook you up with uh, Skeeter Wellhouse and talk to her on the phone. Skeeter. Yeah. She's awesome. She can. She literally take a deep breath and show up in the barn and describe oh, yeah. and, and describe yeah. you what the inside looks like. And she's in Washington State, and then she'll you will interview the kids through her. Mm-hmm. And That'd she'll cool. tell you while they're there, and then she'll, you know, if they're across, if they're time to go home, they'll just walk right through her chest, basically. Because uh, the, mm. the quote-unquote light is always there. They just have to focus, and off they go, which is mm. kind of cool. Uh, yeah, so I'll hook yeah. you up with Skeeter, and you can have a chat with her about it, because she's she'll tell you why they're there and what they're up to, and... You know, yeah, I can. I'm not as good as I can't do the distance thing, but I mean, it's basically how I do it too. I walk into a building and I just basically meditate and float around. That is cool. And, when and did, just uh, pick them all out. When did, when did you figure out you could do that? Um, just I have certain things that um, that you learn as you start getting more sensitive. Um, numbers started with me and started with numbers and then you know then you make up your own rules and it just meditation and and just going into constantly seeing the energy around you in these places that we investigate so it's a study it's an ongoing study and eventually you just kind of pick it all up and it just comes naturally that is a switch i'd like to throw on I really have to focus and I'm still looking at things like from an outsider. It's hard to explain. Mm -hmm. If I'm in a location and I'm seeing something moving across a wall, I'm looking at it um, so detached that I'm not uh, way too hard to explain. But I understand what 
people like you do, you're almost within the energy itself. And you can, though you're out, outside of it, you can actually look at it and go, oh, this is, I can feel it. I can, I, I, you know, I, f- I feel it in my chest. I can feel it on the, on the my skin. And I can feel it in my heart that there's something here. I, oh, for sure. I haven't got for sure. to that yet. I don't, I don't think, who knows if um, it's not well, me for me. It, that's cool. What you can do is, it, what I started doing it is, I heard a lady, Ginny Jones, long time ago. She's awesome. Um, I still follow her. She's um, in Australia. She mentioned something about just basically spreading your wings around and whatever is there, even if it is negative, you can turn it positive. Love is the most powerful emotion and fear. So if you have both, you're pretty good. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's it, it, safe, it, it's that love and, and coming in with an open open mind and uh, and not with a chip on your shoulder. Yeah, everything uh, has to be so positive because I think that's a, a big way that they see you is just basically your energy and, yeah. and you are what you present. Yeah. When did this thing first happen to you? Like, obviously, when you were we talked about you and your brother in this house with the kids, is that when yeah. you first started to notice that you actually could tune into that? No, I. It had that was just that was just pure fear out of that one, and just I couldn't even sleep in the house without my brother living uh, staying there. Like if he went over to his girlfriend's house, I'm sleeping in my truck. Mm-hmm. Uh, none of my dogs, you can't pull them into the house. It was a very very active house. <clears throat> I'm trying to duplicate that and, and pick up and remember certain little things that I can use for my studies now, like energy, how we can distribute it to bring out the most effective uh, amount of energy without you know overpowering it because you have to still say stay safe for your clients you don't want to you know start freaking them out with massive energy of spirit so you have to kind of control it just to find out who they are the energy itself i started doing it afterwards as i got into it more like uh, i've investigated some pretty crazy places up in hunter mile and through the caribou yeah and um yeah i'm sorry here is a big thing i want to get over and and those places that you're talking about, the Hundred Mile House and the Caribou, that part of British Columbia, that the old kind of gold rush trail, historic, yeah. lots of Canadian Indian, a lot of First Nations, a lot of settler activity. Plus, you've got a lot of people who worked in the logging industry, mining. It's a very very high energy area to start with. Yeah. And here you are bouncing around up there, um, going into older buildings and finding stuff. What would you say is the most interesting location that you ran into up in, up in the Caribou or 100 Mile House? It would be the most active place would be the 108 Heritage Site. But having said that, there's there's a lot of active places up there. I mean, you could there's spirits there's spirits everywhere along that trail. A lot of people died along that trail, and I think they just walk it. They continue to walk it. I don't know. It's just weird. And it changes all the time. Like, say, for instance, the 108. I mean, you can go in one day and pick up some spirits. You go in the next and pick up totally different spirits. There was that one girl up in Ken's room. Do you remember that one? Oh, the, the little girl? Yeah. Yeah. That yeah was we got weird. her saying hello, and uh, we got her running. We had all our uh, equipment on the ground in a circle, and she was running around the circle, touching them. It was just a euphoric feeling knowing that there's a spirit running in a circle right beside you. There was a, a location down in Port Moody, British Columbia, where there's an old train station that had been moved. I think it's the third location. Upstairs in there, same thing. Yep. There's a little girl giggling and running around. It is kind of a weird feeling and to actually hear them giggle and hear them running and trying not to get overly excited and figure out what's going on but in your location at the and up for people who don't know where this is it's 108 heritage site is up uh well 108 miles like we talked about a 100 mile house this place is up just eight miles out of 100 mile house and it's a number yeah, shortly shortly um after 100 mile house. and it's a, a number of buildings that have been relocated right beside a lake it's a very very cool location it's like a museum it's a little heritage site where a lot of yeah. the older uh buildings have been brought there it's one of those places that when you're out on a travel you're out with the family out going by it's a great little place to drop into if you're out out in that area i found it when i was there there's a lot of waves of different feelings you can get 
Oh, for sure. It's crazy. It is interesting. There was there. We actually uh, Skeeter ended up crossing over uh, somebody out of there too, who was being a bit of a jerk to people in one of the buildings. So she moved him on, and he what he was. This was kind of funny, and this is this goes back to something that Skeeter and I talked about years ago. But uh, this guy was actually a oh, if I get this right, he was Russian. And he was a Russian soldier who at one point came over uh, to Vancouver, British Columbia and worked his way up into the Caribou and was very, very regimented. But he tagged along up there. Was he Russian or American? Anyway, he tagged along with some tourist. And you know how they like a higher vibration human being like yourself, all of a sudden a lower vibration because they're dead. They like your energy and they'll hang out with you. Mm-hmm. Well, he jumped off the bus or whatever it was up in that area, and that's how he got there. So he had a long interview with this guy, the dead guy, before he crossed. But he was uh, he was a bit of a jerk. Uh, if you were if you came in saying, "Hey, are, are, is there a ghost here?" He would, he, yeah, he'd be uh, all over you. <laughs> it's like he, he didn't like people picking on the other dead people. And if you look like you're picking on him, he'd either tell everybody else in there to be quiet and, or he would start hurting you. So we got he hmm. he he moved on. But that was very interesting, that guy. But uh, is very, very busy in there. And it was in like the old there's a, almost like a two story log building. Mm-hmm. And it was the, uh, the original house that was put together. I think it might have been. It would be to the if you're standing out in front of the the old house, the big the big kind of museum house, big red one, yeah. Yeah, it would be over on the left. Yeah, uh, and he was downstairs in that one. Yeah. So he had a. We moved him. Well, up. there is a couple of that. with me. It's a little bit different. I if there's something that was is really negative, I've had a lot of um, psychics come in. I use a couple of them that I can trust, and they cleanse from the outside while we're inside because basically I would send everyone in there running <laughs> yeah. I would just go for the doors I, and I still don't know why I don't know why sometimes it's hard to get any act because people just run away from me I don't know why you know I just spread the room with love I mean maybe they're afraid of love I don't know or is, it's confusing to them or because- confusing I just I use it as my power I use it as my power to uh, you know well the other thing too is if, if you come in like you've got all these dead people hanging out and they see the living all the time all of a sudden you get some living person showing up and saying Hey, I know you're here, and all the dead ones are going. Yeah, I love oh, you. Oh, no matter what you are, it's hard for them to get mad at you. And plus, they, they're all of a sudden all like, "Crap, they know we're here." Yeah, like for instance, um, a good example of this, and I have many of them. Are really good. We did the Kilby, and there was a gentleman there that uh, was stabbed in the stomach, and in this one room. And um, I guess, you know, gave him a couple of questions he didn't want to answer. And his, uh, we got an EV, it's a uh, swear word. He said, F you, homo, F you, laddie. And it was the same voice. After this was, uh, after this happened in the basement in the Kilby there, I went upstairs and sat in it by his bed that he apparently died in. Days and days he was laying there. So we talked for about an hour, just him and I upstairs. It was very, very cool. And at the end of it, I knew he was there listening, and we were talking. Well, I was doing most of the talking, but in the end, I got a really, uh, really good EVP saying thank you. And that's the thing is... Show the love. Yeah, show the love. Walk in, say, you know, I really don't care who you are and what you're doing. I just came in to kind of give you a big spiritual hug here and find out what's up. But if you come in there kicking doors and and saying, hey, what the hell are you doing here, and you have to leave, yeah, it's not going to work. Then you're just going to... Yeah, no, I'm not a big fan of leaving. You know, I did St. Mary's um, many years ago, and uh, what's, what's I went into Saint, the... Sorry, what's St. Mary's? St. Mary's is one of the residential schools uh, that I've done, and um, that's up in Abbotsford, and it's it's a very active place. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, there's priests there that um, did some unfortunate things to children, and I, was, um, I confronted them in the gymnasium uh, for what he did. I was standing right in the middle of the gymnasium. There's balls, you know, those balls that you throw at people, the big, soft, kind of big, round, red balls. Yep. They were all over the place uh, throughout the gymnasium. And I ripped him for about half an hour for doing all those things, and he didn't touch me. And the group that I was with um, when I first came down here, uh, they were coming, and I, and they don't like, you know, singularities going around, you know, talking to the spirits. You have to have a, two people, which I get, um, mm-hmm. but... I, I'm not a big fan of that. So just 
um, I heard him coming and I went out of the room, out of the gymnasium. And then there was uh, they, the head guy, really good investigator, comes and stands exactly where I stood. Within a minute and a half, two minutes, uh, his watch that has two clasps, I heard both the, both the uh, clasps break off and his watch slammed against the ground. <laughs> I said, <thought>, oops, <laughs> that wasn't me. I didn't do nothing. Yeah, but I've I've been there too a few times, and it I got in an argument. We had we were, we had the digital recorders with the earphones in, yeah. and I was actually asking a question, and I can hear kids answer. Oh yeah, there's a lot of kids in there, boy. And oh. we were trying to say, you know, have you ever, you know, you can you can leave if you'd like, and uh, the psychic. Who was? What, do we have the psychic there? They don't want to go after. Yeah. Well, well, there was a good nun and a good uh, elder First Nations gentleman in in spirit. They had crossed over and come back, and they were looking after the kids who hadn't crossed over. Yeah. And then the priest came through, and the priest was saying, "Don't listen to them. If you leave here, I'll tell God what you did." Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, what? Like, um, you're going to tell God that the children did bad things to you? <laughs> it's like, and, and that was holding the kids back. But there was something else with the bad priest kind of feeding him information. So we thought that was even way more negative. So we had to back off that. But we understood that there were protective beings of the children. But, you know, there was... There was that dark well, yeah, you're downstairs. talking about energy that goes back, that's imprinted on this land that goes back who knows how long. Yeah. So they, they're, you know, even my land that I live on now, the energy from the the residue that's on certain areas, like St. Mary's, is very powerful, and yeah. there there is spirits there that are protecting those kids. It, it was interesting over time on how I've learned a little bit more about what happens on a location like that and how long it takes those children to actually get comfortable enough to leave. It's not like you come in and say, okay, I am I am a witch or a psychic or whatever, and I'm going to cross everybody over. Now, a friend of mine does that. He can he cleared an entire castle in Scotland from the eastern U.S. Permanently, or did he, just, did he go back and redo it and redo it? Or did no, he no, he had people actually, people, he had the, the dead cross over. So it's not like he cleared. It's not like smudging something where you push them all out and they wait outside till the smoke clears and they all come back in again. It mm-hmm. they actually crossed over. It wasn't moving them anywhere else. Like mm-hmm. on this plane, it was just. How did he do it? Did he like um, if you offer energy and offer your energy up to give them to have enough energy to cross over? That's what I think, anyways. But um, yeah, he he does it. I, I didn't really get into it. Gregory Postman is the guy's name. He also channels beings. He's he's a fascinating guy and an author. Like when Skeeter, well, when Skeeter does it, she actually will show up and they see a method of leaving within her. When they look at her, they see her as energy. And they just see that energy as something that they can move into. And then that is, God, I almost said portal. Um, that is the method for them to leave, the light, we'll that's call the, it. That's the, a good way to do it, yeah. Um, yeah. Like, if you bring in something that, um, like, say, for instance, a religion or your own belief system, other than just the knowledge of the energy, um, I think you can jeopardize it. I think because you just don't know how that person passed. It could have been in the times. Maybe they could have been a witch and burnt on a stake. They could have been, you know, one of the children that were raped. They could be whatever, but they just don't like religion. So if you use it, like whatever religion you be, you just kind of got to be careful, I think. Yeah. That's or you just go go back to the simple, this is energy and this is how you deal with it. Yeah. And when we cross people over, it's you determine which of the, there's four reasons why people don't cross over. And if it is a fear of religion, if they think they've done something wrong, yeah. there's methodology used to, all you have to do is make them hesitate and rethink it. And, us, and usually, well, usually 100% of the time, a friend of theirs will come through and say, no, they're telling the truth. You can leave. Like a trusted mm-hmm. friend. We had a, we crossed a guy over who died in prison in Ocala Prison in Burnaby, British Columbia. Oh, so 1942. Is that still even standing? No, no, it got torn down. But this guy was in a, uh, in a house uh, yeah. a few miles away and terrorizing the place. But he died of natural causes in 1942. But he was Roman Catholic. He grew up in Quebec um, back in the 1800s, and he 
he murdered somebody in a fight, killed somebody in a fight during Prohibition. So, died of old age, 1942. Grumpy as hell, ends up in this pe- these people's houses. Another long story. But when we crossed him over, he actually said, they don't like my kind there. Talking about crossing over. Because he thought he's going to go to hell. And we had explained to him, said, no, dude. And we always use the same thing for those kind of people. If Jesus died for your sins, why would you still be punished because if there's a religious spark in them using jesus and dying for your sins that all that makes them do is hesitate for that split second to go what hmm and all that's all you needed and his cellmate came through and said no they're telling the truth you can come well then so it's it like had in the end trusted. it's all the same energy whether you pre- present it with a religion or but I yeah. mean I just I'm yeah. just a little bit more careful when it comes to the religion part but the the energy like you think of whatever it is that you believe in you think of something positive and think of love well you're talking the you know the strongest energy that can be transferred love I mean it is the strongest yeah. so if you offer that to that person and just open yourself up to them they're weak, you know. The longer you stay on that other side, the weaker you are. And they, they're just lost trying to find that energy. And then when somebody comes up and says, hey, I'll give you it to cross over, they take it. A lot of them take it. But I think that if you don't go across right away, you, I think that you get stuck. And that's what people do. If you don't take that first opportunity, you might have sent can't come back. I've investigated several places where we have knowledge of somebody else being with them, like a family that takes them uh, through the light and they come back again. Yeah. You know, I usually, I calculated it with my uh, my studies about three to four months it takes for them to finally move on, I think. And who knows where they go to when they move on, you know, either they come into another meat sack or they just go, you know. When you say it takes them about three months to move on, and what do you mean by that? Well, this is just the studies. I, I, I'm not solidifying anything, but just in my studies, I find that um, the majority of them stick around for about three to four months. Before they cross over? until the person that they're, the reason that they're there is eh, a little bit on the heel side, kind of. They're a little bit over it. I mean, can you imagine just sitting there watching your kids cry? You know, you don't want to stay there and hug them or do whatever until they're oh, kind of over it a little so, bit. So what you mean by that person's hanging around for three months? If So Bob dies and you've got uh, his grandmother come through. Say, so, come on, yeah. you got to go. If Bob doesn't go, the grandmother hangs out for about three months. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I, and just I, basically shows them the ropes. Um, but if you don't go into the light, I think whoever it is, your family kind of helps you into the light. I think, anyways, you, you don't know, right? It's just an assumption. Yeah. Um, the light being, I don't know what the light is. Just I think that the energy that we all are is a group of some sort. I don't know. There's a whole bunch of patches in my studies, but but yeah, we'll, you know, we'll I mean, you hope you find them. We'll get this figured out right about the time we die. Okay, yeah, about, about an hour later, <laughs> we can, we'll figure this out. We're talking to Jim Kaliznik. He is the leader and chief cook and bottle washer for Vancouver Supernatural in here in Vancouver, British Columbia. Paranormal group that bounces around not only in the area a little bit to the east of Vancouver, British Columbia off the coast out into the valley that we talked about earlier, but up into uh, the central part of British Columbia along the old Gold Rush Trail. Jim, we were talking about Skeeter. We cross over a lady who was in out not too far from where you live in a place called Chilliwack, British Columbia. She was occupying a room in a house there, but she died in the 1800s and she was Chinese. But when Skeeter was crossing her, all the other ones we crossed out of that farmhouse went to the to the quote unquote light. Skeeter hesitated and she said, I feel really weird. I'm I'm wobbly. And then she said, oh, I'm standing on a boat in a river. So the lady crossed the river. That was oh. how that old, that lady who had been in her 80s, who died back in 1870 or whatever, when she crossed, she crossed a river. So we started thinking that maybe when people cross, they all go, we all go to the same place. It's whatever our, our, our comfort zone is, whatever our belief system is, is how we move from point A to point B. Mm-hmm. We in the 20th century, 21st century, is we always think about the light. But back in the day, in their belief systems, whatever it was, across a river, go up a mountain, whatever, that's what they see 
to move on, and that is their well, comfort zone. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I mean, it's for sure. I mean, you have, I mean, if you close your eyes, I know this might sound kind of crazy, but say, for instance, you close your eyes and you were to, were given the ability to picture energy moving or staying there or anything, and basically any, everything moving conducts a certain level of energy. And a river is massive energy, and that would light up the room. So that could have been taken as light, yeah. or it could have been a constant energy for this person that they just didn't need to go. Or, you know, it comes right down even to maybe the religious belief is, in our religion, we cross a river to go to heaven. But, sure, again, the river itself there. is is an energy. And that's what I find, too, and you probably find it, too. If you're in a paranormal investigation near any water, even a railway track, we seem to find a lot more chatty or spirit, we'll call them entities. Ah, oh, hell, we'll call them ghosts. We, a lot more ghosts can draw from that and be yep. a little more interactive with us. Oh, for sure. Like, there's, uh, we did a studio in North Van, like a movie set. And Paisley joined us on one on in the in the studio. And Paisley's a, a psychic friend of ours, so just, <clears> yeah. everyone was, yeah. She's awesome. She came on that one, and, and that was the one that we got a lot of good responses. We have a full-body apparition of a lady that uh, died of a drug, drug overdose, and um, the lady that was in my group, she's the one that let us in, and she worked there, and she was best friends with this lady, so she knew her very well. Um, when she'd passed, she is the one that took all the clothes off, like the film industry clothes, uh, when she went into the ambulance, and she passed. So she knew exactly what she was wearing. We did the investigation on. It's her name's Kathleen. She was she's in our um, in my group. It was her birthday, so we got a full body opera. Actually, Kelly took the picture. Kelly Buckler. She's she's an incredible investigator. She took the picture of a of of her friend, uh, a crazy full body apparition um, of her walking with the same clothes that she wore when she died, and that was confirmed. For the longest time, we didn't realize that there was another creepy spirit in the shadow of a back door uh, the behind the full body operation picture <laughs> that uh, a group from uh, from England picked up I gave them the picture so they kind of blew some a light through it and uh, saw the other spirit in the back which is very cool so we got in one picture two spirits <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny too is that um, there's a television I always say this and I always crap on this TV show that's been on for about 10 years and I don't think they've got a picture of a ghost yet but the three of them, they, they're very popular. Well, see, a lot of groups, and it, a lot of groups that I've noticed, they don't really focus on certain certain things. They'll just go in with a recorder and a, and a K2 and whatever else that they, that they have. Um, it's good. Um, it, you know, simple is always better, I say. But oh, yeah. Keep it when, you're, when you're wanting to get a picture of apparition, uh, cam cor uh, like uh, those uh, trail cams, they work good. Yeah, I use a laser uh, setup with my uh, cameras, so I'll I'll have like a, a laser that shoots, you know, hundred feet down a room or a hallway, so anything crosses it, and I get a picture. So doing stuff like that, you get way more pictures. And you know, if you're a, a rookie starting out, go buy a, a decent digital camera and just don't stop pressing that button. Just take a hundred pictures if you have to, because it's yeah. that one that you're going to get. Oh yeah, and and that's the best way to understand it's actually if you just take one picture down a hallway and look at it and there's something there yeah um it, it's it's great to have it but if you take if you had a burst of like three or four and it, it wasn't there in the first two it's half there in the in the third one it's all there in the fourth and then it all of a sudden disappears that's yeah. a clue that you're taking a picture of something that is, oh, is moving sure. in and out yeah, yeah. And over the time, you get to understand what, um, you know, certain lights do when they're uh, infrared or full spectrum light is hitting them. Like you could get shadows from somebody way behind you or they're taking a picture, too, and now your shadow's in front of you. Oh, yeah. It, it's it's fascinating that we we have the opportunity to come out and take these pictures or at least try and then uh, sit around with a group saying, OK, these, this is the picture. What do you see? And like, oh, crap. Yeah. I, I was. Well, Kelly Buckler is the, you know, the, the one who took your picture. Kelly and I worked on a, um, a couple of paranormal investigative teams and i remember we were sitting in a, actually going back to saint mary's this um residential school and something actually walked down the hall and into the room and it 
we could hear it coming to she said i can hear it and i said yeah i can hear it coming down the hall too and, and then we both looked at the door didn't see anything with our naked eye but i had a camera uh going just randomly clicking and the way i can describe this thing would be about nine feet tall about five feet wide all sparkles and it came into the room, and of course, it came through chunks of the room, like its side. It, it the side of it kind of came through. It was taller than the door, but it all it just came into the room, and we, it faded away when I got there. And we just looked at each other, and it was like, oh, okay, that's that's interesting. But it, and she's a ghost magnet too. There, every so often you get. She it, uh, is a magnet, and so yeah. are you. When when we did that investigation there up there, you know. I got quite a bit of evidence, you know, well, when you were around. Yeah, I can't remember I, what it was, but I think we got a good, uh, a really good EVP when we were um, in that building with that, uh, where Agnes apparently lived. Yeah, it's that was creepy. That was a very interesting location. That one hundred eight mile yeah. historic site again, St. Mary's Residential School. Crazy. Unfortunately, this is this is one of the biggest bitches I had about the paranormal team I was with, is that you would get all this evidence of the children and people in the building, and they wouldn't share it with the owners well, of the building. Well, that's your traditional, um, how would you say it, the ghost hunter groupy people. Um, they follow the ghost hunting methods of basically they're just a study. They're not helping. Um, they just find out if there's spirits there or not. Yeah, but I, they didn't, I like they, to take on the... And we're, you know, you're, I, I did do the group. Remember that when I was talking about St. Mary's, it was the group, uh, a, a local group that follows the uh, ghost hunters theories. Yeah, the TAPS thing. Yeah, the TAPS thing. And really, it's, you know, when you're dealing with clients, they just want to know. They want help. They want they want to know how to deal with what's in their house, and they won't help them. They just, they just there to determine if there's a spirit or not yeah and which it, is kind of like really kind of sleazy almost because you're it, going well, and it, trying it, to help them and you know it was way sleazy i've uh, there was a place in fort langley uh outside of british columbia here there's or outside of uh, vancouver an old fort we were in a restaurant in the area tons of evidence like full-on audio i'm having a conversation back and forth buddy's got photographs of a guy coming out of a little closet pushing a hand truck uh, residual energy right through him another picture the lady who owned the restaurant was in there with us she wanted to know what was going on they wouldn't even say hey come over look at this picture they yeah, never told very, them very, anything very frustrating anything they didn't tell them anything yeah. after it was done it was like did you get anything yeah well, it wasn't bad well can i see no well, look, what the f are you doing in my property? I invited you here exactly. to help me because you have all the experience and all the gear. You come in and now what you want to do, and going back to the residential school, you want to come back next week with a bunch of new people and show them. Well, how come I get, I don't get to see? Well, because you're the client, blah, blah, I don't No, uh, but you've turned this into a, everybody in the paranormal community can come and look at the ghosts here now. It's like, dude, it's not a circus. It, and that's the other thing. Uh, you can tell my energy is kind of getting up here. I don't like people using dead people as entertainment. Yes, for sure. Yeah. If yeah. you're going in with the wrong, with, with everything wrong, you know, they're going to avoid you. They're going to sense that. And they're just going to just go and leave and sit in some corner. You have to find them. You know. Oh, I had that. We did a documentary at uh, the place in Vancouver, British Columbia, the uh, Billy Bishop Legion. Really, really haunted. The lady who was president, uh, the last president of the Legion itself, is an intuitive and could walk into a room and go, oh, look, there's a guy standing there and there's one over here and blah, blah. So she was, she knew. So she invited us in. We did the documentary and I did, I went old school on one thing. I hung a piece of string up, which is, I say this a lot, like, so my listener knows this, but I hung a, I hang a piece of string up. Make sure the air conditioning is not coming and going and no one's opening a door and you say, can you move the string? Well, moving a piece of string or thread hanging, easy peasy, because it's just even static electricity energy can move it. So their energy can get that thing going and it looks like it's spinning actually when it gets going so i hung it across around at the bar and on the bar we had a number of digital recorders going had the camera on the whole bit i said uh would you can you touch a string nothing nothing <laughs> but we listened to the digital recorder very clearly hear a guy saying don't touch the string <laughs> yeah you know that's how it works yeah it's like he's he's telling all the other spirits and they're going don't play with these idiots yeah yeah, That's how so, it works. And, yeah. um, you know, you have to take everything you can get. 
and that's really good evidence. We touched a little bit on it, Jim. And again, we're talking to Jim Kolesnik. He is the head of Vancouver Supernatural here in Vancouver, British Columbia. You go to uh, his Facebook page. It is Vancouver Supernatural, and drop by there. Also, they've got on Instagram, The Cauldron 555. Uh, it's a the cauldron of five five five. We're gonna t- we'll touch a little bit a bit on that in a couple of minutes, Jim. But one of the things I do want you to kind of rehash a bit is what kind of gear that you take when you go into these places. Uh, I have about uh, about six Canon cameras that I got converted to full spectrum, and I got uh, a laser on each one of them, and those are pretty effective. And on my uh, where I ever wherever I put one of those, you almost have to have a conflicting evidence so i have a full spectrum video camera on each stand uh with the laser with the camera so that really nothing can get by if you have all areas covered i use zoom all zoom audio you know never really let me down sony has a great uh has some great recorders as well you know you don't have to be fancy when you when you do an investigation the most amount of energy you find fun uh, or i find fun is what you feel like um just the feeling and overcoming the feelings but it's nice to have tools too. I have a SLF camera, which basically a stick man, uh, for those that have seen one. I have FLIR cameras to pick up the heat sense, the heat, uh, yeah. heat uh, pick up heat and stuff, and, and cold. Just a lot of all of those. You know, if you want to do a location, just, you know, you can't have enough recorders around. I think that the distance for an EVP can change and alter with about 100 feet. 80 to 100 feet, anywhere past that, if you have your recorders within that, um, it's very interesting to do. And it's a study that I've done um, several times and just from having so many recorders, you could get on one recorder like, hello, and then 100 feet, you could just get bleh. So yeah. you can't really pick it up, So there's, but you could still hear it loud. I haven't quite figured out why it does that yet. Um, like maybe the distance would be a sense of time and it, and it can kind of change it um like the sound i don't yeah, know it could be i've i've had the incident you, you've probably had them too where you've got three recorders sitting on the table and two of them get something and one doesn't or one yeah. gets something and two doesn't it's like it it, it is a, a sound anomaly on why one person's recorder is identical to the other person's recorder but it only exactly. shows up on D- one directed energy energy um like when you have directed energy misdirected energy you know, directed energy is, is I think them focusing on something. They have to be really close to to really pick it up on a recorder. Yeah, and do you, know? you um, this is one of the things I used to what really tick me off again back in the traditional paranormal team, whatever traditional is you know, for this, for for this hobby, this this um, this thing we do. You get a you'll get a blurp sound. And you get it back and you listen to it on the computer, you open it up and you whatever program you use and you listen yep. to it and you crank the volume up and you go, uh, I don't know what that is. But you slow it down 20% and all of a sudden that blurp is hello. And then yeah, I would say, absolutely. hey, look, look, the guy said hello. And the, the traditionalist saying, no, you modified the sound. So why what? Well, you modified it. <laughs> I said, it's, well, it's, I not, it's not evidence those anymore. Kind of guys is they really should... They, they they wouldn't know how to actually figure somebody out um, with their traditional evidence that they have because they're just always waiting for it. Um, yeah. The time difference between them and us, uh, we haven't figured that out yet. And, you know, whatever is that, whatever goes through that veil gets distorted by time, I think. So to not slow something down to get evidence is kind of stupid, really. Because, yeah, I agree. Um, they, you'll never really know who they are. You have to alter things. I mean, who cares if it's like oh, traditional? You know, who cares? Nobody cares. I don't, I don't care what people think about my evidence. I think about my evidence, and what I pull out of it is what I think and what I want to believe, and it, it goes into my studies. If you have a group and you just keep caring about what other people think about your stuff, then you're in it for the wrong reason. Yeah, I, I got really good communication back and forth. I just had to slow it down because it yeah, was coming through. It's like, it, and it, it up even. 
Yeah, and it was full on sentences, but but they said, well, no, you've modified it. And I said, look, I was a policeman a long enough time. I know how to collect evidence and I can articulate exactly how many. And because of the computer program I use, I can say I, I, I slowed it 23%. And obviously you keep the original. Here's the original. Here's it slowed 23%. Well, I'm going to ignore what it says because you slowed it 23%. Well, how about you just go, yeah, all right. You're you're an idiot, and we'll move on. Uh, well, that's that's almost sixty to eighty percent of your evidence is slowing something down and trying to find out who they are. If you don't do that, you're not really an investigator. And if you think that you're trying to, um, you know, trying just if you're just trying to convince people that oh, there's a ghost here, um, you know, most of the evidence is it's not altered. It's um, what's a better word? It's just reconfigured to uh, for what is changing it, like that time thing. Yeah, it, it, there's... So that's just know, silly when you don't use that kind of evidence. Who cares if somebody from another group is, oh, it's not good enough, you know, whatever. The, it, yeah, that's when you kind of look at that other group and just kind of shake your head and say, okay, you yeah. guys have fun, go out and do your thing, and don't tell your client what's going on, and it's yeah. just irritating as hell. So if anybody out there wants to go out and talk to a ghost, take a recorder out, head out to where you think a ghost, and pay attention to what Jim is like talking about. You'll feel it. You'll get goosebumps your stomach will flip oh for sure you'll know it the hair on the back of your neck stands up yep. because all your That's a good sensor, yeah. all your spirit guides around you are going hey dude <laughs> there's something else here and we're gonna get uh we're we're gonna tell you it is fun but at the end of the day jim why do you do it um more to help people um i did and I really enjoy helping kids. Like, I've done so many investigations where you walk in and the, the kids are getting screwed up by really bad dreams or, you know, they, you know, you help you help the people get over what's in their house. You know, you don't want to see them move. You don't want to see kids get attacked while they sleep. You don't want to see anyone really get hurt by a spirit. They're just confused. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know that they're affecting something. Or if they do, you, you know, you get rid of them. But um, it's more about helping people. Um, and just fulfilling my own studies. And that's what it, it should be. We have we started off doing it because we were curious. Most of the time when you first start this off is that we come in because we have a bunch of questions. Yep. And I've seen things, therefore I want to find out what's going on. After a while you start going, mm, yeah, this is a little bit a little bit beyond just me. I'm starting to understand this, but now I can help somebody else and, yep. and find out maybe something about it. And and I know I've known you for years. You're you're a dad. You're it's all about kids. And they have, um, they're around me. And I know that like even Skeeter, like she did me a, a, a thing on me a long time ago. And she said that there was uh, uh, several children hanging around me, and I picked them up. <clears throat> and I know exactly where I picked them up. I did a, I rebuilt a cemetery that was totally abused, uh, the Woodland Cemetery in New Westminster. It was a, like a school right beside the asylum, uh, the, that crazy uh, river view there. Yeah. You know, these kids, their headstones were all removed. Um, I went around Vancouver uh, searching for them all, and we found close to a 1,000 of them. And I rebuilt the cemetery in my backyard. So I had like a 1,000 heads of these headstones of children that have died i've had them in my backyard putting them into some really big concrete walls and setting them to each stone in the in the concrete wall and uh doing this i've met a whole bunch of kids i don't know maybe they liked me and stood around and stuck around but you know when i go into a place i could usually pick them up pretty pretty quick it's a different energy it's like a sharp more constant like it's a, just a, almost like a sharp poke it's a, just a different type of energy as an adult i don't i can't it's really hard to explain, but you just know that it's a it's a child, and it's you know a search for me really. You it, know, yeah, I love I, the residential schools. I love trying to help. I've been to a lot of them uh, throughout PC. It's very sad, um, and if you can you know off just give your energy for them to use and utilize to, to move on or do whatever, then you know it's just a good feeling and just said for my listener to get this in perspective there's uh, what jim is talking about there's a place called riverview which was um once called essendale it was a uh, it was a forensic psychiatric unit well it was a w w back in the day it was called uh, a nut house it was yeah. for people with mental health issues down the road from that 10 or 15 minutes was this place that you had worked on that Woodland was, Cemetery, was, yeah. Woodlands, uh, because Woodlands Cemetery was right beside Woodlands School. And again, this is a, uh, a place for younger people who had mental health issues. 
And back in the day, before we had a, a label for the word autism or whatever else, or if you were just slow or overly dyslexic or you stuttered, you may end up going there. And of course, there's going to be sexual abuse, children oh, there murdered. There's a lot of the nasty stuff going on there. Yeah. And they were buried in the cemetery. The Standing headstone. Up, they were buried. They were buried standing up. Yeah, they were. The cemetery was so full that they were standing them up. Like when I was building the trails and my compactor, um, I was I was punching through the tops of the cemetery, the, their caskets, and it was yeah. it was horrifying. It was absolutely horrifying. If I didn't show all, that's where I learned how to do my love thing. And if you just spread it out, you know, that's all you can do. And nothing really happened. I made more friends than I did anything. So. Yeah, and you've got you've got the father energy going. That could, yeah, it could all everything. Yeah, and you've got that. So you've got these children kind of gathered with you. The other thing too is I found, and again, this is over the last you know ten years of talking to people who deal with dead people and cemeteries. If you find a headstone and you read the name of the headstone in your head or out loud, they show up. Like if sure. it's this person is yeah. even if they've crossed over and they're sitting on a beach in Fiji and and all of a sudden the doorbell rings because they've you've read the name on the tomb, tombstone they show up and go who who are you are you a relative like what's going on so that's you know they they start coming over now if you've you've been on the land itself you know you you've experienced that energy from the trauma the over oh, years and years of trauma. And now you're reading the, the name on the headstone. Yeah, they're going to tag along with you. They're going to uh, think, oh, this guy's kind of cool. Uh, he's got good energy. I'm going to hang out. And they'll come and they'll go, too, which you'll find. If you had somebody check on, if you had Skeeter come back and say, you know, the kid's still there. She goes, oh, yeah, they are, but they're different. Yeah, <laughs> so I think that you pick things up. You pick things up along the way. Like, I've, yeah. been, I've been attacked so many times. And it's usually just by dreams. Like I, I, you know, <laughs> I would take something, and I know I just took something because I'm I can't talk, I can't do nothing. When a spirit, uh, you know, if I I like to think that if I'm helping someone, I'm going to make the opportunity of taking that spirit out of the house with my own body. Um, I don't know. I try, right? And that's what I believe that I could. It may sound stupid, but you know, no. I just want to help that that family. Yeah. So and uh, you know, you just do whatever you can. Jim, go through one of this, uh, one of the attacks. What is the, what is the most common one for you? Um, well, the most powerful one that I had was um, they controlled my life for a, a while. I had a lady and uh, and her children were getting attacked. They they were all sleeping in the same bedroom. You know, they were they were a, they were a beat up family. Just. You know, so they were weak uh, through the nasty stuff that was happening in their lives with the divorce and stuff. So they were, they were really getting attacked. And I, um, I walked in to the house, um, and we got a little girl that said hello. But I sensed more was there. There wasn't. It was. It just wasn't her. And that was what I uh, kind of came across the first tall dude, and um, and he was standing beside the bed. I really couldn't go in the room. It was it was almost like it was pushing me out. I I, I finally uh, managed to go back in, and uh, really didn't get anything of it until the I got a phone call. We, we we got the one EVP, and we knew that there was a strong presence in, presence in the house, but he wasn't talking. And we w- I went back by myself because she was just horrified of the escalation of the attacks in the dreams so I, I went out and bought him a, a massive uh, tourmaline stone and um, I put it by the uh, the child's bed and I had my all my kids hold it and 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 uh, give it good energy and you know help to do whatever you know you, you just do whatever you think right I mean whether it helps or not I think collective energy is very strong and it can be added to whatever a stone especially um, so I, we, I put the stone there and I felt this thing just nail me and I was I couldn't even remember her name I had I had like I, I was standing by the, the base the door uh, talking to um, her kids and I couldn't even remember their names. I was just like, "Whoa!" Oh, I could barely stand. I just said, "I gotta go," and I took it with me. And that night, 
it was the most horrifying dream I had in my life. I dreamt that my dog was, you know, I, I love my dog. And they were getting killed. And uh, the second dream was even worse. It was my child getting killed. It was a dream I woke up sweating, screaming, crying. I had... Um, uh, I, I, I grabbed uh, my sage and a recorder. I turned it on, and I said, you're getting the heck out of here. So all I got on a, on the recorder was a growl, like a... And that was it. Um, shortly after, I, for some reason, I don't know why, but I bought a boat. And this boat was in uh, Oregon, somewhere... Oh, uh, somewhere in Oregon, right on the right on the border of uh, Washington, and uh, um, the on the way there, I got a flat tire right by a the creepiest place ever. It was right by a place called Medicine Lake. Just a free, they're brand new tires. Just a what the heck. My pop tires popped. I pull over to Medi Medicine Lake, and this it was like a crossroads. And uh, we fixed the the tire, and when I got back in the car, whatever was attached to me was gone. So oh. whatever that was <laughs> convinced me to take him, and you know, all the way there because he wanted out at Medicine Medicine Lake. So that was a that was an incredible experience for me. That is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so, but, uh, and now I now I can figure out why that guy, that uh, old Russian guy or whoever he was, ended up up at a hundred eight mile historic site. <laughs> it's like yeah, tagged along, tag, ta yeah, tagged along with somebody, uh, some guy up, uh, some tourist, and that's how he got there. It's the same as yours. Yours. Uh, it almost has to be a full circle, though, if you really want to study them. Uh, like if you actually can pick one out of what's happening in your life, they're very interesting. The full circles. Um, it, uh, you know, if you're you doing a lot of investigating, you have to pay attention to the full, the full circles. And what do you mean by a full circle? Um, something that brings you back to that place and in, uh, for another reason. Oh, okay. Like, why did you go back to that place? Why? Like, for instance, the 108 Heritage Site. Um, I was investigating that place uh, for several years, um, and there's the old man in the in the in the barn that we had a full body apparition of and the we identified him as the caretaker that uh, still had family living around uh, I'm not going to mention any names but she they, they, he still had family uh, that was hanging around so I brought his family in and uh, we did an investigation you know with just pure love and we got a lot of we got an I love you from him um, we got just lots of tears really um, well, shortly after that, <clears throat> I was driving my truck by it. I, w I worked regularly and driving by it, and my truck just died. Just right on the side of the road, <laughs> right in front of the, <laughs> the, the 108, just died. Um, I couldn't get it going, uh, and I towed it home, and I had to drive my, uh, my wife's truck, which is a big excursion. And uh, I there was a... Right after um, that happened, there was a uh, uh, it was a Halloween bash, like it was a Halloween party. So I offered the, to help set up the Halloween party for the students there, and I was I went to the back of my property to pick up my big trailer to bring there to help them load it, and the uh, the uh, the uh, steering box shaft sheared in half, leaving me with no steering, no nothing, as I'm driving on the uh, the rough road going to get my trailer in my yard. Wow. Um, that, that truck drives my family to Vancouver on a very regular basis. He, he saved my family. Full circle being, I was going to do something for the, the ranch. Uh, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And, and I mean, if you can study the things that are happening around you, you find that there's a lot of things that you don't see. But if you're aware of them, you know, it just helps your investigation. I think. Oh yeah, and it helps you study. Well, yeah, it's um, 
Yeah, it, it is fascinating when you can look back, like in hindsight, and yeah. connect all those dots. Yeah, it's connecting the dots. Yeah, great. Again, if anybody else wants to follow Jim at his uh, Facebook page, it's a private group, Vancouver Supernatural. And um, Jim Collis Nick is also starting up a thing on Instagram, or the Instagram is up now. It's called the Cauldron Five Five Five. What is that, Jim? Um, it's a it's a um, just an idea that uh, uh, Lana and I had for doing um, weddings and venues and and uh, the place that we live is very active. It's a uh, you know it's right on the Chilliwack River. There's severe. There's a you know a lot of history here. Like we uh, you know I saw I've seen uh, lights from the front of a stagecoach swinging back and forth, flying over a river. <laughs> you know I mean it's a very active place, <laughs> and you know very active. And it's um, it's basically going to be a place where a spiritual retreat uh, slash wedding venue. Uh, the film industry is hopefully comes here uh, lots, um, and it's just giving back. We're going to have we're going to have a lot of things for kids here. Like I'm going to have a Santa Claus that it, you know beats all Santa Clauses, and um, where people can come and kids can come. Um, we do a lot of things for the uh, like handicap kids and child abuse kids of child abuse with with certain organizations they come and bring their kids here and it's a lot of fun um you know just spreading love really oh it's perfect yeah it's absolutely perfect then and uh do you still have um your acreage is right on is a river or a creek it's right on the Chilliwack River uh, at the Allison Pool Campground. And we have a big cauldron of a, like it's a big, we picked up at a movie set, it's a big star foam uh, cauldron. Very cool. That is cool. That yeah. is cool. Yeah, very cool. We, it's a, it's just, it's going to be a really fun thing. And, uh, you know, the energy here is in, absolutely incredible. Like it's an old, I had the old river um, coming through my property and it moved, but... If you're sensitive, you go down into that river, and it's you could, it, it's like you could still feel it, the river flowing through your your veins, and to meditate on there, and if you want to ground, well, you you basically uh, stick your feet in the sand as far as you can, and just let that water flow right through you. You're cleansed. Um, you have we have uh, I built a like a sweat lodge that. I have crystals in and you know, in the sand. It's it's just incredibly spiritual. Oh, that's it's, it's hard to explain. You have to actually come here and just and it's that's it's interesting too. Um, like you and I know when you say I automatically know when you say it's hard to explain. I know that's a good place because it's it's one of those things that uh, like obviously I'm not that articulate because I'm fumbling all over this statement but we understand how things feel yeah and we know to, the energy around us it's yeah. the study of the energy around us yeah and it's it, it is that feeling that makes these places special mm -hmm. and when you actually are lucky enough to live in a location like this uh, it, it's absolutely fantastic oh yeah and I, that's yeah. that's kind of what i like about your, and it helps your property me out and it helps people out that come here um like david pills lives here he's a he's a uh he's a uh well-known we'll, we'll uh, say woo -woo. Hey? <laughs> david pills he's yeah he's he's one of us woo-woo people it's like yeah he's a cool guy yeah yeah, I should, I should get, I'll bug him and uh, come on and talk about it too. Um, I just want to shout out to uh, a psychic friend of mine, Lori Wheeler, and uh, who lives in Santa Fe, New Mexico, um, for joining Vancouver Supernatural while I'm talking to you about it. And uh, also Tui Snyder from Texas, who's an author and an explorer of cemeteries and a oh, uh, very cool. cool lady. Tui's just joined uh, you at, um, or, or oh, come good. drop by Vancouver Supernatural since I've been chatting about it. And, um, uh, just the, uh, uh, like, um, oh, crap, 
where was I going? <laughs> I was thinking about like three different things at a time. But yeah. um uh, yeah, I mean the energy here. If somebody wants to come here and uh, and bring their group, you know, I'll be we're more than welcome to and come and camp and stuff. It's a lot of fun. It's it's a cleansing, you know. Yeah, it helps. Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's a very very interesting location. Uh, I haven't been out there. I, I came out and we had picked up apples. So I had a load of apples uh, yeah. a couple yeah. of years ago, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I used them for, I can't remember what I used. Oh, we cooked. We made, like, tons of food with them. Yeah. And, yeah, that was good. Yeah, it's great location. Uh, again, it's for those of us who live in the lower mainland of British Columbia, outside of Vancouver, British Columbia. If you're in Vancouver, it's about an hour drive um, in rush hour, as long as you're going against it. Uh, and it's like, Hey, I really didn't miss rush. I was in rush hour on Friday. Like the other day I was actually driving and went, Oh crap, it's rush hour. I didn't miss this at all during the apocalypse. What the hell's going on? It's like uh, people are well, back on the roads. Now. The, I was, like I was a essential service. I had to still do stuff, but the, um, um, the, amount of traffic that was gone in in the last two to three weeks was very nice but it's coming back now yeah <laughs> you know it was nice it was very nice you get yeah, to I was work telling, all the wall the way to vancouver in like an hour yeah i was telling people to uh geez go go out have a walk uh breathe get out and we haven't had air this clean in like a hundred years yeah because nothing has been going on here get out and have some fun but uh yeah it's it's uh well, maybe the, it's, it was like uh mother nature uh you know saying hey give me a break well that's that's one of the controversial things i was saying uh in a couple of podcasts ago it was like yeah well i think the earth needed a break and um how many people had to die before governments actually turn the switch off so we needed X amount of people to die on the planet before they flipped the switch. So the people who had in their in their soul path said, OK, I will leave at this time. So, yeah, I'll volunteer to die. You know, it's a weird thing to say, but you understand the woo woo side of things. Uh, well, we're all soldiers in, in protection of our families. Yeah, and uh, a bunch of people decided to leave, and yeah. that got the government to say, "Oh crap, we've got to shut everything down." And the Earth went, "Okay, fine." So, the, think of, if you know anyone who passed through the coronavirus, they are soldiers who died in a just war. Um, it uh, it was for a greater, a much greater good, and it was just for that Earth to take that deep breath and go, "Okay, now let's see, can I do this without having to screw up again, or can how far can we go?" And hopefully, hopefully, it's going to take a while to uh, pollute those canals over in Venice that are clear. You can see the bottom now, and the dolphins are coming back. Maybe it'll, it'll take a while before those things. Uh, get all polluted again well it, it couldn't we'll have been like it couldn't have been more well put i mean our governments governments all over the world should actually see the outcome and say hey look why don't we just shut it down everybody take a week off you know i'm sure that yeah. would be very uh welcomed <laughs> yeah you know? it's 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 interesting now too a lot of people aren't going back to work they're well yeah. i shouldn't say they're all going back to work but they're working from home they figure about 5 to 10% of the population may actually continue to work from home. So that might help a little bit anyway. Sure. But it's all all going for a good cause. And you're a guy who lives and actually operates your, in nature. You're actually a, a piece of the forest where you are. You live sure. with it. You don't live <laughs> yeah, kind of I mean, against if, it. If you ground in it all the time, you become a part of it. I mean, a lot of people... You know, they use um, the earth as their their ground, which is, a, you know, obviously the best way to do it. But, um, you know, if you can actually touch it and be there and sit by that big million-year-old stump or on it, you could soak it up. Yeah. Yeah, and you're in a, you're in a very spiritual location, too. You're, yeah. uh, you're right on running water. You've got energy going through there. No, no, <laughs> it's no wonder all the dead people come home with uh, there's, uh, well yeah there we kind of kind of welcome them too a little bit um just whatever 
Yeah. What kind of um, stuff do you do? Like what uh, your your team? If I had a ghost in my house, or you're the kind of people I call and say, "Hey, uh, I was wondering if you can come and tell me about my ghost," or do you do you have people you work with to cross people over? Um, do you work with um, a psychic? I. It's like uh, I would I would basically assess the situation first, find out what is there. Um, with whatever means I have and then uh, you know go over everything with the crew and and the, and the whole and the homeowner um, it's very I find it very important that they're in there for the whole process and you know believe it or not right at the end of the whole process they're a heck of a lot more comfortable in that house so it's to me it's a win um, you know and the spirit and them have some sort of knowledge of each other that um, you know they can live a little bit more easier, but the whole thing is is, is connecting, um, connecting the the people that the living with the dead and sending off whatever doesn't want to be there. Um, you know if it's if it's a really if you know I've never really come across a harsh negative energy, but um, that that you know picks you up and tosses you, but. Um, you know, I, I do believe that there is, you know, spirits out there that, that have studied it for many years and can do certain things, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I was with a, well, no, I wasn't with her. I went to a location in uh, California called the Preston School of Industry or Preston, uh, Preston Castle. And my friend, uh, Christina George, she walked up the front stairs uh, of that location once. And she's a very, very connected, intuitive and uh, people standing behind her saw her come off the ground and come flying down the stairs again, get thrown down the stairs. But cool. she was lifted up. Well, hope she's okay, but that's cool. I find that very interesting. I'd love to be there. <laughs> yeah, it, it was creepy. But it's yeah. an interesting place, and it's one of those places just like the residential school where uh, Preston School of Industry, the Preston Castle, is a... Um, is a is a location in California that was built because it, back in the 1800s or so, if you were a 12 year old boy and you stole a horse and you got caught, you went to San Quentin or Folsom Prison with mm. the big guys with adults. So California was a little bit ahead of its time and said, you know what, that's not going to work. So what they did is they built a prison for kids. Mm. And in the in the prison, they had leather work, carpentry, and you were trained in a trade. So when you came out of jail from stealing the horse, there you were. Now the Preston School was also uh, the had a, had a, um, a doctor's facility and it had a little surgery area and a hospital. Well, that ended up being the only medical center for all the rural area around there, the farms. And back in the day, it's right on, and that is Gold Rush area. Uh, it's outside of Sacramento, California, a little bit west, uh, a little bit southwest. So that was the, the hospital. So if you're a mom in town or in out on the farm and you're going to have your baby, you might, and you're having complications, you might go there to have the baby. And you might die there. And the baby might die there. So there were people coming into the building from the outside also dying in the building, along with the kids who were dying there. And some there's some uh, talk about some of them being murdered. Like you had a murderous little 15-year-old kid who fell down and scraped his leg or something, goes up to the infirmary and mysteriously dies, where they were actually just euthanized. Uh, so there's there's that story about that place. But the place is like jam packed full of dead people. There was a kid, I think a 14, 15-year-old kid who was shot in the back uh, trying to escape. Uh, was, uh, How do you shoot daughter. a kid? Like, seriously. Yeah, well, they said it, the, and the guard was uh, tried. He had two different trials, and they found him. Uh, they couldn't convict him because he said it was a warning shot. <laughs> but he just fired it low. Wow. So anyway, that that kid is well, still haunting and probably place. rightfully pissed off. So yeah, and uh, when I was there, there were like you could look down a hallway and you. I saw a guy peek his head out of the door and duck back in, and we walked mm-hmm. up to the door and it was completely boarded up. So wow. I thought it might have been somebody else in the building because we were there for a, a paranormal convention. And uh, it's like, oh, somebody must be ahead of us. And the guy peeked out and ducked back in and went up and looked. And it, the door was completely nailed shut. There's no way. 
and uh, later the psychic, well, Skeeter, the, our psychic, one of the psychics I was with said, oh yeah, he's uh, one of the um, guys that used to work here. He's an admin guy. And he oh. would just, he heard, he heard us coming down the hall and he peeked his head out to see where we went back in. So, damn. But it was very, very haunted location. Incredible. Um, the brick is made of old red brick and that brick was actually manufactured at Folsom Prison in California. And then Which they're all there. in sweat and blood. So, yep. wow. Yeah. That so that energy. Residually. Yeah. And it's on top of really sparkly kind of land. It's 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 huh. that kind of land with a high quartz content in it, a lot of solar loading from the sun. So there's a lot of energy that the um the dead can pick up on to help us. And we had a kid a uh, young kid walk around with us and kind of take us on a tour. A, a dead person. And uh yeah, some other kid. Oh, I also I brought uh, a car magazine with a bunch of cars, uh, hot rods from the fifties, and I bought and motorcycles, and another one, uh, a World War Two. Uh, it was a Time magazine or Life or something. It was something to do with World War Two, um, and D Day. So it was around that time. So anyway, I lay those out on a table, and I guess the room just got filled with kids wanting to go look. And these kids are anywhere from ten to seventeen. 16, 17, but they liked, oh, they, uh, I brought a, a girly magazine and, uh, like a swimsuit edition magazine. I brought the, uh, the car one and a world war two one. And they were, they were giddy that I brought all these books and laid them out. That's a <laughs> so, great idea. Yeah. So I had all these, uh, kids showing up. Uh, but the other thing too, is we weren't allowed to cross them over because it, it was said that there was, uh, a woman, a nurse came to us uh, and said, you know, I'd like to leave. And we mentioned it to the lady who was running the thing who freaking lost her poop on us. How dare you come in here and try to cross people? It's like, uh, no, we told you this lady came to us. And she just couldn't get it through her head that the lady had come to us and asked to leave. And she said, there is a system in place here. Um, they are leaving when it's time for them to leave. Oh, it's that's like, for sure. I totally believe in that. Yeah, like that's said, why you have to study a place first before you go in. If you just go in just swinging, you're gonna, you're gonna, and that's why you, you know, they probably don't encourage it either because people do just go in swinging. Yeah, and you know, without properly knowing, or they're not really, you know, they, you know, they're not, re they don't know what they're doing. Like if you present yeah. the energy, that spirit's gonna take it. But if you don't know how to distribute it, it's gonna, you're gonna have spirits from all angles coming at you wanting to go. And now, what are you gonna do? You know, yeah. that, then, you know, you can't give all that energy away. It's just, it's tough. So you're, what if, what are you going to do? You're going to make them angry. Yeah. You know, I, the, the sad part of doing an investigation in, in my studies are, is um, if you have, if you do a, 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 a cleansing, um, it has to be select. Um, otherwise, you have all your other investigations afterwards. The only EVPs you're going to, you're going to get are help me. Like I, it's just stupid how many help me's you get after you do a cleanse. Well, that, that's it. Anything you you get a psychic will come through and let's say we're going to clean your house, and the psychic's remotely going to come in. Yeah. Well, they just every, invited a whole whole whack every more into your yeah, house. Every time that psychic shows up. Uh, in in our case, Skeeter, it's like she says, "Okay, I, there's four people from the neighborhood just showed up." I've told them to wait outside because they know she's coming. Huh. And she says, okay, you guys all have to stay. I cleared uh, one of my friend's houses out. I cleared his house out. Uh, Skeeter showed up. We crossed. We, we had interaction with the, the male spirit that was in the house. No problem. Yep. And then she said, okay, I'm going to, these other ones are all gathering now, so let's deal with them. And we dealt with everybody in the neighborhood came through. You know, we had an uh, uh, Indo-Canadian lady from the turn of the century was giddy. Oh. <laughs> and she was telling all the, she goes, yeah, everybody else, come on. And it's like, dude, how many people you, how many dead people you got in your house? Well, he only had the one guy until Skeeter showed up and then the neighborhood ghost showed yeah, up. Yeah, that's what happens. You know, you have to be careful and don't broadcast it. If you're sending somebody, just quietly send them. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense, but. Oh, no, it, it totally, totally does. I was on the Queen Mary last year and the guy who kept wake, who woke me up in the middle of the night, the only reason he woke me up was that he knew that I had the connection to get him out of there. Yeah. So and that's the energy. 
energy that they get stuck because the longer they're here, all they need is that little boost of energy just to cross. And, and that's how, and you have to offer it, I think. I don't know if they could just take it from you, but if you offer well, I, it, they, and I can't do, it. I don't, I can't do it myself. We did a whole podcast on Skeeter crossing him over, identified oh, I him, what his I, name was. Like, neither can I. I, just, I get either David to come in and do it. So it's done right. I don't like, you know, <laughs> I don't like ruining things. I'll, I'll do simple things. You know, if it's not jeopardizing a family in a, in a location, but I, I'm gonna if it, if it's a family in a location, I'll, I'll get somebody that that, uh, that that knows what they're doing. Yeah, well, like you're getting Peter. good at it. Like, hey? yeah, you're you're getting good at it. So yeah, it, but eventually, it's still a, a thing but it, that, um, you know, I'm still learning. Uh, so, and if you don't know what you're doing, man. You can make a yeah. It, you know, it's like work. You know, if somebody hires you to build a wall, I can build a wall. Yeah. While you're here, do you know how to change a gutter? Yeah, I know how to change a gutter, but uh, it's not what I do. Yeah. So sure. it's like, I, I know a guy who can do that. I yeah. could do it, but I know a guy who does that. So you know, you kind of default to your your trade. You you, you yeah. Your comfort. And there's a lot of responsibility there too. I mean, you know some of these groups go in they don't know what the heck they're doing and they just aggravate or do something that now the people have a real problem and uh you know that that one that i was talking about that that attacked me yeah. there's a local lady shaman uh a native lady i don't know her name but she was there uh prior to me uh prior to our group going in there and uh she couldn't she had to leave she couldn't move it but i wow. just i you know it was just uh, I got it out of there, and oh, ever since then I, I don't know. It was, yeah, it was a couple of bad dreams, and you know, a long trip to Washington, but or Portland. But it was the whole process was enjoyable I, in the end because the spirit's no longer there. Yeah, you know. So for me, it was a it was a victory. Were you ever in the when you were down in Portland? Did you ever go to the uh, Shanghai tunnels? Uh, no. I didn't. I just. It was just a little town, tiny little thing, right on a border, right by a, a lake, or right by the Snake River. Oh, okay. I can't remember that. Oh, town. that's when you were like, yeah, all right. That's right. Uh, jet boat. It picked up the boat. Yeah. Oh, you got a jet boat? I had a jet boat. I had a jet boat. Yeah. <laughs> They're expensive, and you know, to run one, it wasn't getting used, so I just got a small one now. It just, uh, you know, you can take it out more and have fun with yeah. the kids. Well, that'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. You know what? I want to thank you for dropping by. I, it's been a while since we had a chat. And it was a lot again, of fun. I enjoy it. And, you know, down in the future, I, or in the future, I'm, I'm doing some, like, Haunted Golden coming up this year. Crap, that is so much fun. Um, you know, I welcome anybody that wants to come on that one. I mean, the, the whole town opens up. And that's what I'm kind of focusing on is going into these little towns and just Perfect. bringing the town together and everybody, you know, all the haunted places you just get, you know, your crew to go into. It's just a lot of fun. We're doing Haunted Golden uh, coming up and, and uh, we're doing uh, uh, Haunted Gibsons coming up as well. That one we got uh, the Boot Hill Cemetery. We got the Boot Hill Ranch, Molly's Reach. We got a whole bunch of cool places down there for that one. So you're more than welcome to come in, in, uh, on any of those with us. It's a lot of fun. Oh, what I should do is um, when I hit, uh, I'm gonna, I'll hit up uh, my buddy Jason Mills of Mills Picture Studios, who does the documentaries, and oh, we'll uh, awesome. get him to tag along and uh, film a documentary. Oh, that would be just incredible! So yeah, it's, it's just nice him, to give back. Oh yeah, and that's and, how you and, do it is with a really good video everybody can share, and you know, just and, and Gibson's is a, is a hoot. I, I love it. I like Molly's Reach, and again, for the Canadians who know anything about the TV series The Beachcombers. It's that's that's Molly's Reach. It's still there. Molly's Reach, and, yeah. but it's it's a very very funky little town. I was in a place. Uh, there's a bunch of little shops just the other side of Molly's Reach, going north, yep. uh, right around the water there. And I was in a dress shop or something there with my ex. And there's a woman walked in and and disappeared through the like walked through the racks. And I went, <sighs> okay, that's interesting. <laughs> She's well that that whole building that whole set of buildings there was once an old man's house uh wow that maybe you got his wife or something <laughs> uh yeah this lady was like from the she looked like she was from the 60s yeah uh and she would be in her 50s or something she had kind of high hair that's the only reason i remember she had really high hair 
and that's kind of drew my attention and then she disappeared and i thought oh that's kind of creepy yeah. so uh who knows who knows well, we got them, where she was the morgue too that we're sleeping in shut up really yeah. you're gonna sleep in the morgue yeah that's it's a cool bed and breakfast now it's a big old and uh, heritage house and we're, we're <laughs> getting the uh we're getting the upstairs suite so that is cool very interesting uh weekend that would be that would be cool and uh when what weekend is that we're still working out the golden and the okay. uh, dates because everything got changed because of the COVID stuff. So, um, Damn apocalypse. you know, my, my venues, I help all the heritage sites, a lot of the heritage sites. We have, uh, you know, uh, uh, fundraisers for them. We're a nonprofit, so I don't, I don't, I like to just give back. And um, uh, we did, uh, everything is, is all about uh, uh, donation. Good, but yeah, That's we're kind of working cool. out the dates and uh, and stuff. Everything I, I, changing. One of the places I'd love to, uh, if we could only raise enough money to actually fix it, but it'd be millions and millions. Is the old uh, uh, Maritime Museum, which was the original courthouse in Victoria, which is all oh, shut cool. down now. But it is crazy haunted. I had Vancouver, uh, the Vancouver courthouse, the one right with the right in the middle of the. It's the uh, museum. No, yeah, it's the, the art gallery, uh, the art art museum. Yeah, or art art thing there. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we did that. <laughs> oh, that's a crazy place. We went right down into the gutters of Vancouver. That oh, is cool. That, that was an interesting investigation. Well, next time you do that, call me. I'll bring my film crew. We'll do yeah. it. We'll because because Jason's always out to do documentaries, and it's um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. And uh, he shows up with everybody. And, yeah, and if you need a free. good crew, we got lots of lots and lots and lots of equipment. Excellent. All right, sir. We've been talking to Jim Kaliznik. He is the head of Vancouver Supernatural here in Vancouver, British Columbia. Also, um, go check him out on Facebook, please. Vancouver Supernatural. Also, The Cauldron 555 on Instagram. And it's, uh, it's something that they've started out on their property here just east of Vancouver. And if you want to go out and experience that and camp out and maybe get married <laughs> that would be kind of cool uh so again thanks very much jim for dropping by oh i really enjoy it uh james it's a lot of fun all right that's it let's roll and hey 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 let's be careful out there